to welcome everyone to our study this evening and I'd like for us to get started with a prayer if you would please father we thank you so much for the times you allow us to gather and father we thank you for the 
precious word that you provided for us. For the times we can get together and, and study and, and glean from the scriptures, how we can better uh, to be equipped to fight the evil one and to live our lives and to understand and have what it means to be a better servant. And Father, we just uh, thank you so much for the blessings of being a member of this congregation. And Father, tonight we'd also like to pray for that you'd be with our uh, group that's at Pine Springs, that they may be having an enjoyable time, an uplifting time, and that they, they may be filled with zeal and desire to come back and serve. And just thank you again for taking care of us and giving us so much in this life to enjoy, and most of all for salvation in Jesus, and we pray in his name. There's a word we are uh, not, we're pretty reluctant sometimes to use this word very much. And that word is stupidity. And just a quick definition of stupidity is it's behavior that shows a lack of good sense or a lack of good judgment. And you might say, well, what's that got to do with us? I would like to read a uh, a text out of Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 23 through 25. All this I tested, and this is Solomon speaking, all this I tested by wisdom and I said, I am determined to be wise. But this was beyond me. Whatever wisdom may be, it is far off and most profound. Who can discover it? So I turned my mind to understand, to investigate and to search out wisdom and the scheme of things. To understand the stupidity of wickedness and the madness of folly. And the first time I ran across this, I thought, that's an unusual way to say this, but if you really think about it, wickedness and adhering to wickedness is stupidity. Why? Because wickedness, wickedness involves a total disregard for justice for righteousness, for truth, for honor, for virtue. It's evil in thought and a manner of life. It's depravity, sinfulness, criminality. So I think we can assess from just these few statements here, there are no redeeming qualities at all of wickedness. So what's the result of that then? Here's a verse I would like to read that I think will tell us exactly what the end result of that is. Romans 1.18 The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of men who suppress the truth by their wickedness. The wrath of God is against wickedness. So, is there a message of hope? Of course there's a message of hope. 1 Peter 2.24 says... Jesus himself bore our sins in his body on the tree so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. So mankind has a choice. You can embrace the stupidity of wickedness, which what? Brings the wrath of God. Or you can embrace the power of the gospel and live lives of righteousness in Christ and have that hope and soul salvation that we all desire to have. At this time, we, uh, the only announcement that I have is, please remember the Pine Spring campers, they'll be coming back uh, Friday. And that's quite a trek across there and just pray that they may have a safe trip. And once again, that they may all come back ready to go out and suck. At this time, we'd also like to dismiss the young people to go to their classes. And we're very, very privileged tonight to have Barry Love bring us a lesson. And may we all join together in studying with Barry.
care to worry about the microphone shadow on my face. Good evening, everyone. We're going to talk about goats and sheep tonight. Um, so we'll give a little bit of intro here. Um, I'm Barry Love. Or I think everyone already knows me. Um, I don't often give uh, I don't often give discussions to, to groups like that. I, most of the training I perform is usually technical and to uh, operators, uh, technical level. And so if I put you to sleep done by PowerPoint, I apologize. But uh, this is kind of how I'm used to going. Uh, all right, uh, so let's start at the beginning here. We're so we're in Matthew 25. Uh, we'll start in verse 31. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on the right and the goats on the left. So sheep and goats, what's this all about? Are there any differences? Yes. Does it matter? There's a difference. <clears throat> All right, so we decided there's a difference between sheep and goats. So you think you can tell goats and sheep apart? Let's see. Goat or sheep? Sheep. Easy, yes. Good job, everyone. That's a sheep. All right, next one. Goat or sheep? Sheep. Again, easy. That's a sheep. All right. Goat. Obviously, that's a goat. Goat again. Good job. You guys are nailing these. All right, let's make this harder. Goat or sheep? Mountain goats. Mm, okay. Yeah, that was mountain. Next one. a big horn sheep. All right, so let's uh, let's take this up a notch. <laughs> what is this one? Goat? Goat? What do you guys think? Who says sheep? Goat? Sheep? Harold's right. It's a sheep. Yes, it's a I'm going to butcher the pronunciation. This is Joanki sheep, and it's a breed from West Africa that has fooled many before. In fact, this particular picture fooled both the photographer and the editor, and NPR had to write a retraction on their, their article about the goats in West Africa. All right, so. <laughs> yeah. Anyone? Goats. Sheep? Sheep? And then for a goat. Okay. All right, so. All right. It's a lot more complicated than they're like, oh. Yeah? It's not so easy, maybe? All right, let's try, let's try one more. Oh, go back. One more. Ah, go back. There we go. Well, they saw it. All right. That's a sheep. That is a sheep. It's another, it's another some of those Joanke sheep. So uh, what did we learn here? The goats and sheep can look very similar, and especially in like, Africa and Asia. They're, they're not so far apart. Um, so this, this parable we're going to get into is about the, the deeper differences despite the outward appearances. So how do we tell goats and sheep apart. Well, we're still talking about goats and sheep for now. So one of the big differences is the foraging behavior, how they go about their, their lives and go, go around eating. And so um, it's a lot about behavior and diet selection. So goats are natural browsers. They like to go eat leaves and eat twigs. What? Cans? Tin cans. They don't eat tin cans. But they don't. 
No, uh, they like to, let's see, where does it say that here? Uh, Forbes is what the, the goats of chin link tend to go through. And that just means broad leaf plants. So that's what they like to. <clears throat> and so, uh, and what is sheep normally? Yeah, they normally just eat grass, on grasses. All right, um, so. Horns. We can also use the horns of the animals to tell them apart. So goats are naturally horned, and some of them have beards. Um, <clears throat> and so there are some sheep that have manes, um, but what we normally see with goats is they have the now upright, fairly straight horns, and the sheep, the rams, tend to, tend to have the curly horns that come out to the side. And so what is the easiest way to tell is we look at their tails. So if you can't tell if it's a sheep or a goat, you look at the tail. tail the goat's tail goes up, and the sheep's tail hangs down. And so, uh, telling them apart also primarily comes down to behavior. So goats have, uh, they have, <clears throat> they're more naturally curious and independent, and they will seek shelter more often than, than sheep will. So sheep have a, the strong flocking instinct and become very agitated if they're separated from the rest of the flock. They like to be with the other sheep. So we can say sheep are fluff, fluffier, dumber, and have always been dependent on their shepherd, and they're defenseless. Goats have a reputation for being independent, opinionated, and curious at best, vulgar, dangerous, and destructive at worst. And so how to tell them apart, we can sum it up like this. Shepherds protect the sh their sheep from the environment, and goat herds protect the environment from the sheep. <laughs> so again, let's, uh, let's look back at, uh, at Matthew 25, 31. So when the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people from one another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right, and the goats on his left. So, have we figured out how to tell goats from sheep? Go to sheep. It's hard to say. You can't do it. Definitely a goat. I'm giving you all this information. So again, this is another goat or sheep. <laughs> so anyway, well, let's jump over to John chapter 10. Um, starting in verse 25 here. So Jesus answered them, I did not tell you, I did tell you, but you did not believe. The works I do in my Father's name testify about me, but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice, I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. So luckily for us, Jesus knows who his sheep are. We don't have to determine who's the sheep and goats. <clears throat> and so um, what we, we've seen is that you can mix the sheep and the goats, and there's no danger to flocking the sheep and goats to, together. Um, it's not up to us. The shepherd knows who belongs to him. All right, now let's tackle right and left. Just a second. So Matthew 25, 33, who will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. So again, I'm going to butcher some pronunciation here, but in the Greek, the word dexios is used for right. And the meaning for that word is the right, the right hand, and it also means, it's also a metaphor that means the, um, the, a place of honor or authority when they talk about seating people on the right hand of, of the king. And so, <clears throat> the left, the word, I'm going to mess this up, unimos is used for the left. And so, uh, the meaning Again, is, is left, the left hand, and then this is also very interesting. It is, also means of good name or of good omen. 
but these omens were often used euph euphemistically and called unimos, which in fact were regarded as unlucky. So uh, it's, it's kind of meant <clears throat> a little sarcastically. And so this also is where we get the word uh, sinister omens. So the Latin word sinistris is also the word for left. And so I'm sorry to all you lefties out there. Uh, we don't trust you. <laughs> so the sheep are called by the shepherd to the, to the place of honor, and the goats are sent to the unlucky side or the sinister place. So let's go back to Matthew. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you are blessed by my father. Take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in or need clothes and clothe you? When did, see, when did we see you sick and in prison and go visit you? The king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. <clears throat> and then he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They will also answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you? He will reply, Truly, I tell you, whatever you did, what you ever did not do for one of the, the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. <clears throat> so the part of this that I find the most surprising is a surprise by both the goats and the sheep. Both of them were surprised by the, uh, the king's response. Um, the sheep were surprised, um, saying, hey, when did we do this for you? And the goats are saying, hey, when did we not do this for you? And so, um, what did you do for the least of these, you do for me. So who is the least of these? So it is the hungry, the thirsty, the strangers, the naked, the sick, and those, those in prison. <clears throat> so, um, uh, so kind of sum things up here. A goat doesn't follow anyone. A herd of goats goes where it wants, and the goat herd follows behind. So instead of grazing, the goats browse, foraging for whatever strikes their fancy. So it tells us that if we are allowing ourselves to be led, being sensitive to the pool, pool of God's spirit, and following the path of our shepherd, we are sheep. And so... Um, Um, so a reward for being sheeple. So sheep and sheep energy are commonly used to describe God's relationship with his people. Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures, leads me beside still waters. <coughs> Psalms 95, 7. For he is our God and we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. In John 10, 11, I am the good shepherd, the good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. John 10, 14, I am the good shepherd, I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. Yeah, I know. Um, that was pretty much all I had prepared. Yes, sir. Uh, what I'm seeing that it makes that separates the goat from the sheep, or their I see their actions making making them a goat or sheep, and then their dedication. But it's 
not real obvious, is it? I mean, or I'm not seeing it to be real obvious. It seems to be a fine line, they say, between goat and sheep. Uh, so what I kind of pull out of, out of this parable is goats will follow their shepherd. And, um, I'm sorry. Sheep, sorry. Yeah. The sheep will follow their shepherd. Um, and the goats, goats kind of do whatever they want. If we are following, if we are following Christ, uh, we will be considered his sheep. Um, and and we're known to him as sheep by our actions. So taking care of those that are the least of these <clears throat> is is. Um, is how we make ourselves known to the shepherd. Um, yes, Lynn. No, very. Oh, oh, they're claimed animals on God's list of claimed or unclaimed animals. So that's not what causes the goats to be less desirable. It's the choice in that. Out of is a kid. Uh, my grandma oh, all bunch of goats out of boys from the farm. That's uh I've never been so frustrated in my life after <clears throat> dealing with cattle and goats. I thought they were dumb. He said no, they were just had the mind of their own because cattle you take them out, let them out in the morning, they go graze in the evening, they know the water's there, and they come back and you just go drive around one time. Goats. They fight you to keep from coming back to, to what you know is good for them. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot of what we see in, in uh, the early day Christians. Not that it's not true today. It's, it's the fact that it's not just the choice to make, but the attitude. They want to resist. I, I laugh all the time and said they're independent. That's a, that's a mild statement. <laughs> <laughs> I had a minute of it after the first three or four days. And it, you know, it's, what I'm trying to say is that it's a choice, but it's also an attitude. And to me, that always come to mind when I used to study this about the goats and the sheep, and, and I really could tell the difference real quick but among the animals, you know. But I think our concern today should be our attitude. Not just the choice we make, but why are we making it? I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to say, but, but I think they did it when I was a kid, just make me mad. But, but there was an attitude that they rebelled against anything. That if I went off and made a noise, then they'd run over and see what it was. But other than that, they going to do what they wanted to. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a big lesson to me in this. You know? And so if you look at, do I help strangers now? What's my attitude in that? Number one, well, I even feed the people I don't know. Do I let somebody, will I help them? But even if, if I am, am I doing it because I'm trying to be like Jesus? Or, that's the way I see all this. I don't, I don't know. But I'm thankful I had that experience, but I didn't enjoy it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Uh, putting it in the context of the church, every church I've ever seen has some people that are on hard times. Things that went wrong. And uh, that's this Matthew 25 is where we judge ourselves. We can ignore them or we can help them. And uh, if, if we just say, oh, I didn't see them, you know, I didn't know they were hungry, I didn't know they were sick, I didn't know any of these things. <coughs> and look at the last line there, it's going to be tough on us. Uh, on the other hand, like Lynn was talking about attitude, you can have the same attitude over $20,000 or $20. If, if that person has zero dollars and you give them 20 and that's what you got, God's happy with it.
but if uh, if you have to uh, save your money for your new boat or whatever, and you ignore that brother, you're in trouble. So one thing I probably glossed over and then didn't really discuss. And so Matthew 25 contains three parables. It has the the virgin, the, the ten virgins with the lamps, the five that were wise and the five that were foolish. The next one is, is the, the talents, the parable of the talents. And so the this parable of the, the sheep and goats is not is really an explanatory. Parable for the, the previous two. And so it is our, our decisions and our choices in life um, lead us to, to our ultimate judgment. And so if, if we're wise with our oil for the lamp, if we are invest our talents wisely <clears throat> and, and use them wisely, if we, if we take care of the least of these that I pointed out, those are the things that, that makes us sheep, and it, it, not blind followers of Christ, but followers of Christ. And so, <clears throat> um, so it is an explanatory parable about the punishment or the reward that will be coming towards us at, at the end of our life. Well, uh, verse forty is very important. And the king will answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brother, you did it to me. So we need to know all the folks in the church, especially the ones that sneak out in the last song, because they don't want to see anybody. Because uh, we're going to be responsible for them. we we got to look at those uh, brethren of ours that are ashamed because they're having a hard time living in a car, whatever, and take care of it. Well, along the same lines as Lynn, my uncle raised Joshua goats, which are very mid-sized dog-sized goats. light enough, I just grabbed his horn and stopped him in his tracks, but if he'd been any larger, he could have done some damage. We had a neighbor to my grandfather's ranch that raised sheep, and I never had a sheep attack. I apologize. I think part of my uh, my nervousness up here caused me to, to kind of rush through these slides a little bit. Um, <clears throat> outcast. There will also be outcast in that society factor. Like the sick, like the lovers. We've talked to our third through fifth grade class about the fact
not as like when, and their question is when did we see Jesus like that? Because Jesus, he was amongst them, he was one of them. When did we see you like that? Well, he wasn't. These are the outcast. And so you have to go out to them sometimes too. Yeah. Um since we have some time, uh, about 30 years ago, in this building, right here in this group, uh, we were going to have a, a big name speaker come and speak to us. And uh, everybody wanted to come and hear it. Well, when I got to church, there was a Harley parked across the door over there on the north side. And there was a big, ugly biker wandering back and forth in the foyer. And it, he, he just like the sea parted in front of him, you know. Nobody speak to him, nobody did uh, Anyway, uh, when it came time, DA got up and he apologized. He said, you know, I'm so sorry. Uh, we had this great person who's gonna come speak to us and, and he's not here. And the biker got up and said, he's here. And he went up and he took our hides off. <laughs> for being so uppity and so snooty and so not paying attention to the <clears throat> least of these people that were uh, that were wandering around in the foyer back there. And that was a really good lesson. We remembered it for 34 years. <laughs> So I think I want to leave you guys with tonight is, is think about who we need to be helping. Think about those that are in your life that you need to help, that are hurting, that are sick, that are hungry, that are thirsty. <clears throat> and and see, what, see what you can do for them. Um, I know in, in the current day, um, with, with all the, the social benefits we have, uh, we kind of provide a little bit of a social safety net. We look down on those that are, that are on our times a little bit, and we say, well, you, you have government assistance that, that can go. And we, we were commanded to pay taxes to the government so the government can provide social services. We have been, we have been tasked with going out and, and clothing the naked, feeding the hungry, not saying, well, I pay my, I pay my taxes and the, the government can take care of it. It's still on us. It's still our responsibility to go out and, and do these things. It's how we are, it's how we follow our shepherd. It's how we are our sheep instead of the goats. Uh, still, since you have time. Uh, about 20 years ago, I was a deacon here and uh, I was re uh, responsible to the elderly people. And I discovered real quick that you have to go visit every one of them. Because I found little old ladies huddled up in front of their kitchen stove trying to keep warm because they didn't want to bother anybody. And uh, you've got to go and you've got to get with the sheep and you've got to smell like a sheep and you've got to deal with the sheep if you're going to find out what's wrong with the sheep. Because, uh, they, I mean, we saw them real soon. And you'd ask them, how are you doing? Oh, I'm just fine. But you go to their house, a little bit different situation.
one of the things that, that stood out to me was that the goats will seek shelter and the sheep have to be led to it. And yeah, we're, we're supposed to be sheep. And um, a, a struggle with the independence, I know, I know when it's raining and I, I want to get out of the rain. And um, maybe I need to have a little bit more faith to follow the shepherd and, and trust on trust in that um, for him to come lead me to the shelter when I'm supposed to go and not make that decision on my own. Um, I guess. I think it's important in the church that you all need to screw it. Everybody can reach somebody. I can't reach everybody you can, and you can't reach everybody you can. But, but if you notice there, it says, Lord, when did we see you hungry, feed you, thirsty? I believe it. And y'all may disagree, so listen close. God built us to be in that quality, this is my opinion, that we all recognize. We may run and hide from it. We may deny it. We may be overly humble. But I believe in every one of us. When you allow Jesus to change you, then you know there's somebody you can help. And I, I like their answer. When? They just did it because there's people that, like I said, that I would try to get away from and Fredo sitting there for 30 minutes and or thing about him. But that don't mean that that person can't be reached. And it doesn't mean that her talent isn't valuable or mine. And that's always impressed me about this scripture is, you know, if I invite, it doesn't say one person did all that. It doesn't say every one of y'all did that. said, this is what you did for me. These different things. And I believe sometimes we're like, I have allowed myself in the past to get lost in the church because, you know, I know Lee can do this, Bob can do that, and so it's easier for me to sit back there. And that's okay. There's people you don't want me to talk to, okay? I understand. <laughs> but there's also somebody maybe that I can reach. So am I open that door? Am I handing clothes out to them? Am I feeding them? And, and I believe that's overlooked in the church. I don't know judging anybody. I, church in general, in the United States of America, I believe it's too easy to say, well, that's the elder's job, that's the preacher's job, that's the deacon's job, that's the lady's job, that's a, uh, and I don't believe that's what this verse is saying. Um, people recognized and they did it in, it was so into their heart that they didn't realize they were doing anything special. I think that's the attitude God's looking for. You're not doing it for anything in return. You're not doing it. And plus, hopefully, you know, using common sense, there's people that, that I can't reach, so I need to be reaching the ones I can, however I can. And I believe that's something that's overlooked in this, in this parable. That's just my opinion. Y'all may disagree. Thank you, Lord. Let's close out in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much uh, for, for tonight, for this opportunity to, to gather here and, and 
study, really dive into your word, Lord, and, and look for applications to our hearts. I just want to ask that you'll be with those that are, are sick and are hurting and are, are able to be with us here tonight. We also ask your blessings on those that are here tonight, that you will go with them as they return back to their homes, Lord. Strengthen them throughout this week and just continue to watch over them and, and bless them, Lord. And we just thank you so much for the, the teaching and the, the life and the great example of, your, of, of the life, of how to live life uh, from your son, Lord. We just thank you so much for the, the great sacrifice he gave for us, that he gave for all of us, the, the blood he shed on the cross, the blood that washes us clean, Lord. Uh, so that we can join you in heaven. We just thank you so much for that from the bottom of our hearts, Lord. It's such an amazing, amazing gift that we've been beyond comprehension. And just thank you for, for all the many blessings we have, Lord, to those that are too many to, to name. We just, we just thank you for all of that tonight. And let's do your son's name we pray. Amen. Everyone be praying for Keith Elliott. They uh, moved him to Las Cruces last night. He's on it. He's innovated, but he is not responsive.